Yo, and welcome back to the iSpooge Daily Channel. This is an experimental tech and media brand. This will be a vlog, probably 20 minutes, on the topic of something like, I just have to take whatever people give me, and that's a fact of life. Now, am I rejecting my own authenticity? In a lot of cases, probably. So, it's, you know, the child abuse treatment at Starbucks I've talked about before, the torture by my dad during pandemic that I had to put up with until it escalated to physical, like after pandemic was kind of done and stuff, thankfully, so I ran into a homeless shelter. Had to, you know, you just can't complain to people because if you complain about things, now they're, it's like a negative one against you, like. So today, I'm at the co-working space and like I don't want to out people and make them look bad or anything but so the founder of the co-working space was talking about homeless people setting up tents across the street from her house not just in the park like usual but actually on the street in a no parking zone they've been there for two days and she's like calling the police trying to get them to come check it out i'm homeless in case you're not familiar you don't look homeless uh, oh you're cho choosing to be ho oh you have a car uh, uh. homelessness is not having a choice by my definition so all these drug addicts you know this is a theme there's drug addicts and then there's homeless people 75 percent of homeless people are not drug addicts so give the drug addicts drug treatment, and then we can see homeless people as what they are, people who are homeless. Oh, experiencing homeless. This isn't about words. This is seriously about drug addicts being seen and all homeless people being seen as drug addicts. Because the homeless people who are not drug addicts are working very hard and blending in like myself. Okay, so she says that, that's bad enough. To another business professional at a company I could name, I can see their logo right here. And it would not be good for the company to hear, well, they, well, most people don't care. Most people hate homeless people. So for the small subset of people, you know, who care anything about homeless, and before I was homeless, I hated homeless people too. So the person said, well, they, they, they spend time in the gutter anyway, so it's fitting or what they deserve or something like that. So, you know, it's just, so if I would have stood up even looking like I am and said anything positive, you know, it would have been weird because just getting up to start an argument in defense of homeless people. And then I'm always the first one here and the last one to leave. Yeah, I'm homeless. It's not because I'm sitting here camping here. Like, see, that's another thing too, is my agency is removed from me because I'm homeless. Like. I can't just be a hardworking entrepreneur who is, you know, working hard as a dishwasher, good, honest money, and then before and after work, he's working on his business. If I was in an apartment, that would be like so commendable and like so hardworking. And but because I'm homeless, people are going to see it as, oh, he's just in the workspace doing whatever, hanging out, you know, what homeless people do. What I complain about homeless people doing in the library, loafing. You know, yeah, the library is half leisure, half productivity. So technically people aren't in the wrong loafing in the library, but a co-working space, you know, a coffee shop, another thing like the library, but a co-working space, you're kind of in the wrong to be loafing here. And, you know, because it just brings down the energy of everybody around if you're just sitting here loafing. I'm obviously being productive. Nobody suspects that I'm homeless because I didn't come here until I had gained weight, gotten some good clothes, etc. You see why I didn't just get this home, this co-working space right when I got, you know, when I was run down and everything. I don't want people to see me as homeless because that's how people feel about homelessness and homeless people. And so like another thing too is like, so at the Hacker Dojo, I was known homeless and people would do things like, you know, leave garbage next to me when they left. And, you know, so another thing is like, people do weird things like 
wash themselves in the bathroom and make a mess like homeless people do and stuff. Because Hacker Dojo famously had people, at least internally famously had people who would come to California in their car and just work at the Hacker Dojo. So like that's kind of voluntary houselessness, but not, you know, it's like now we're getting into these words again. But it's like they, they were entrepreneurs who drove to California to be where stuff happens. And that is actually objectively higher chances of succeeding in a startup in the Bay Area. Um, I could get back to that maybe or talk about it on another video. But yeah, um, so like, but yeah, uh, but yeah, um, so like, I know. See, this is where speaking practice every day, 20 minutes would really help. I'm not doing it at all anymore. But so, you know, when people know that you're homeless, they try to like, they're extra bad to try to kind of frame you as the one doing bad. It could even just be a startup competitor. You know, it could be anything. But so, you know, the, the founder again was like, oh, someone's leaving stuff in the sink and I'm gonna catch them. And someone owned up to it, thankfully. But all, all that goes through my mind is, in a way, it's like, well, she's not openly blaming me. If she sees me as homeless, she'll probably be blaming me. But I don't think she knows, you know? Like, I think I've done a pretty good job at, you know, aside from being here a lot, because I'm actually here working a lot, you know, I've put out like 20 apps. Since, I haven't put out 20 apps. I've made like 20 apps since I've been homeless. I've got now 13 docs, apps for, docs for 13 apps. That's not all of them, but those are just the core most developed apps that I use the most. I've got 13 functional requirement documents. So, I mean, I could potentially sell some of these apps, just like literally not sell licenses, but sell the app. So I'm making these, these are an asset, you know, like I'm sitting here building assets in a co-working space, but none of, I would get no credit for that if I was homeless. Just sort of like on YouTube, I come on and, you know, it's no matter how much tech stuff I'm sharing, all this and that, as soon as I started begging for money, which I had to do, uh, I'm just on here like grifting and growing crazy. And yeah, I've tried to record a couple more videos, but I've had battery failure, audio failure, you know, like normal stuff that when I was doing it every day, we'd hit a bump like every week or every couple weeks or something where a video didn't work out. But because of those reasons or overheating. Um, yeah, so that really sucks because you know the sink thing i didn't think too much of it that was like a week ago or two weeks ago or something but this thing about like can't wait for the rain to come to wash away the homeless tents i mean if they were all drug addicts that would absolutely be you know something everybody could agree with but that's kind of like the gaslighting of the homeless thing is people see the drug addicts out being ridiculous and they call them homeless people. And then there's homeless people like me who if I were to speak up, I would be seen as a drug addict. And all of my hard work would be seen as loafing. It's tech work, so to, no, to everybody else it doesn't look any different than sitting around on YouTube. Ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. So, I mean, this is all areas. Like, another thing is, so, you know, I decided to actually go out a little bit and just see the spots on a Thursday and a Saturday night to get like slow night versus busy night contrast and, you know, venues with live music and, different things about them that are nice in the town or desirable in the town. Um, and again, when I would talk to people, if it, you know, well, two things. One is I finally, you know, went to the bar at my job and one of the managers who's always cool with me, like knows I do, everyone's cool with me and knows I do a good job basically. 
except like a couple, I think one younger guy who is worried about me being promoted before him, which is understandable. And if I wanted it, I would be because he's been aiming for a management position for a while, but like, I'm clearly qualified. You know, I'm just, I don't have a lot of experience. I'm new to the company. People don't quite trust me. But anyways, I was saying to one of the manager, you know, now that he like knows me, it's less of a big deal that I, I sleep in my car. But when you first start a job, you don't want that kind of thing to come out because people really effing hate homeless people. But once he sees I show up every day, I'm never late, I always do a good job, I'm proactive, I'm easy to train, easy to work with, not a creeper, like all this stuff that's like, you know, 40 good point. Like if you don't know somebody and you hear one thing like he's homeless, boom, negative. And now he's got to swim up against this perception of being a homeless guy and all the suspicion and cultural programming against homeless people and thinking they're an addict and you know, all this stuff, like not drinking and not swearing at the beginning was extremely, like now that I've gone out and they've seen me with a cup of wine in my hand, they're like, okay, he's not some kind of weird, like Jesus freak or, you know, whatever. But, you know, so it's like, though they're a little bit more loose suddenly, like just because of the fact that, okay, I've gone out now. Now, finally, like after months of working there, I've gone out. Okay, but yeah, so even one of, one of the other managers there was telling people before I told anybody that I'm homeless. Like, so they, that, I knew that they were gossiping stuff about me behind my back and it's confirmed they were. So like when I would meet people when I went out, I just, you know, they'd be cool. Like everybody I talked with was cool and stuff. And like, you know, but if it, the topic of living in my car came up or well, sleeping in my car anyway, came up, uh, goodbye. Or, you know, just it would fizzle. So you can't really tell people that. And I make enough money to rent an apartment, but, and we're at 12 minutes. I make enough money to rent an apartment, but I don't have enough to move in because I need to save that money. And I still owe my last landlord over a thousand dollars, less than two over one. I don't remember exactly like 1400 or something, but yeah. So I mean, in theory, I should be paying that. One of my old buddies lent me like a thousand bucks. I got to pay that back. One of my relatives lent me a good amount of money that probably I'll never be able to pay back in the rest of my life because it's over the course of two years during pandemic or a year during pandemic. So, I don't even know how I'll pay that back. I mean, the thing is, should I pay back my debts or get into an apartment first? Slowly pay back your debts so that you can, you know, be doing both at the same time. No focus equals fail at everything. You got to pick one thing because when I went from five days a week to four days a week of work, suddenly I went from saving money to losing money. No life changes. So I now I'm back to five days. So I'll be able to save money. Like I was able to save some money again. because I got five days and then my days changed to back to four. And because we hired a new person, they got one of my days and I'm gonna get a day that we're not open yet still, that we were usually Tuesday. And so, you know, a very, very small amount of money makes the difference between saving and draining. So, oh, we'll get rid of this co-working space and say, where do I go when I'm not at work? Oh, go to the library. The library is closed three days a week. We'll go to Starbucks. I mean, it's cheap. It's just a couple bucks for, uh, yeah, that's where I got the math to justify this decision. I'm saving money by having this membership because I'm spending $10 a day at Starbucks on two coffees, maybe two coffees and a bagel. How much is that per month again? 300 well just limit yourself to one coffee a day have some discipline man up 
Okay, I've got to go there multiple times before and after work. One, two. Well, just order a water. I am, de I am above doing that. That's one thing I'll say. I'm above going to Starbucks, ordering a water, and taking up a table. Call me un-American. Okay. Especially for the amount of time that I sit there, which is 5 or 6 in the morning until 8.30 in the morning when I go to work. And then 4 in the afternoon when I get off until it gets dark. Could be 8, 9 o'clock at night. Some Starbucks are open till 10, some 8.30, you know. Basically until close. So I'm there open to close every single day, except in the middle, which nobody remembers. Even like psychologically, people remember the beginning and end. So I'm there when they open, there when they close every day, just like this co-working space. But there's nobody here to see me walk in and see me leave every day. There's only logs of my check-ins and alarm activations, you know. So like if people wanted to go digging, they could figure out but anyway, you see what I'm saying? So this space is 200 a month, Starbucks is 300 a month. So your brilliant option of get rid of the space, save some money and just get a coffee, sit at a coffee shop. Or you're telling me to be a parasite and mooch and go there and have water for free. Well, you know, desperate times, oh, there's a movie where a kid raised his kid in a subway. Uh, every single day, somebody would have seen the traces of that in a couple months. I don't know how long he was there in the movie, but the Will Smith movie from way, way back in the day. I don't remember. I never watched it, but yeah. So like that's, those are the, that's the level of solution people have is just quit doing this thing to save. They don't think about the whole system, right? So let's see where we at, Se 17 minutes. So yeah. My whole thing is just habits. Try to be as consistent as possible every single day. That way I don't need motivation. I just wake up, I know my routine, it's tight. And you know, at the week level, it's a little bit harder, but you figure it out. And with algo ske algorithmic schedules, like when I was working at a couple big corporate retail jobs, they'd algorithmic schedule me and it was crazy. Like I'd start in the morning shift consistently and then they'd start getting me all over. You know, it would it'd descend into chaos to where it was not the same thing every week. But it started off that way. But, you know, like as they hire people who have special scheduling requests or whatever, kids, you know, I get it. But there's also people with, without those special considerations needed. So it's great to work with all men because nobody has those kind, you know, a few, sometimes, sometimes I'll need to do dad duty, but almost, you know, it's nice being in a space full of all men. And anyway, so this job is my first non-professional job where I've had this stability week after week. And people who have been there for a few years are like, yeah, I mean, my schedule never changes, except maybe when their job changes. And, you know, every now and then there's odd things, but because it's so consistent, you're more than happy to help out and go the extra mile when needed because they're good to you, you know? They, you know? So here, okay, I could, I could get an, I'm getting confident enough in the consistency that I could get an afternoon job, you know, a second job. And I really like when I have three days off in a row. I, when I have two days off in a row, I might get like a half a day of productivity on my business. When I have three days off, I might get a day and a half of productivity because it's like, no matter what the gap is, there's a day and a half of like doing chores, laundry, yada, yada, yada. And so, you know, there's like a day and a half or at least a day of, you know, stuff you got to do. So a three day weekend actually gives me time to do all that stuff and ha get a little rest and have a full day of working on my business. So getting a second job w is likely going to leave me without being able to do that. So anyway, I didn't get to everything I wanted to cover, but we're at 20 minutes. So thanks for joining. Take care. Bye.